Last time I gave crumbs. Is that a pen? What? In his ear? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Unless it might be the straw which you use to suck out his brains when you open the psyche locks. <laughs> ah. Ah, you know what? Now I feel much lighter. Yeah. <laughs> Where's algebra? Hey, I'm Grump. I'm not so Grump. And we're the Game Grumps. All right, it's Game Grumps time, everybody. Hello. Well, welcome. Sorry. I didn't examine this. Just okay. My bad. Mr. Nick, what's this piece of paper? <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm drunk. It's called an autograph. Autograph. <laughs> the paper's got Mr. <laughs> Karina's name written on it, so it's his autograph. I can't read it at all. Fuck no, you. Paul, Pearl, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe we shouldn't have brought you on this murder case. <laughs> to be honest, I've never seen writing that looks like this. Ah, uh, it's a special way of writing called cursive. Look here, see how it says to my dearest Wendy in more normal letters here? With this sloppy, unreadable writing, it's crazy and cruel to give this to someone. Hold on! Wendy, I've heard that name somewhere before. Burgers. Because <laughs> we've got horror. Alright. Wendy old bag. Let's go fucking- Oh, yeah, dog! Did, did you not realize that's who it was talking that's about? That's fucking Wendy old <laughs> 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 That's why she was in the room. She was a witness. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Wright. How are you? Ah, uh, Mr. Powers. Have you been here the entire time? Yeah. People connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home, let alone leave. All right. <laughs> What's that sweat indicate? Like... Come? No. In, 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 uh, in Japanese art like that. Does it mean he's embarrassed or yeah, it's, yeah. nervous? Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of like a, like an awkward, like, oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm sweating. Can you tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai TV show? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the best show I've ever seen. The Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed towards kids. It's the sequel to The Steel Samurai. I see. This time, I'm not in it. There are three Samurai Brothers. Aluminum Samurai, Tin Samurai, and of course, the Nickel Samurai. Uh, it's a love why in Neo-Old Tokyo. It's a love why? What does that mean? I have no idea. Okay. I see. Wait. Oh, I think it means uh, like it's a love triangle. Oh, God. I love what? I love why. This girl, Sayo, works at a tea shop, and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh, I guess the Y shape is like three brothers colliding over this one girl. Anyway, Sayo is actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan's leader. Sounds like an unusual situation, like Romeo and Juliet times three. Romeo, Romeo, Romeo and Juliet, Juliet, Juliet. <laughs> yeah. So, mu so much unaliving. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a triple tragedy. It's like a triple tragedy. It's, it's a sex double tragedy. A triple tragedy. Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Um, what the fuck are you talking about? Yes, Pearl. What happens next? I want to know. Miss Hale, does Miss Hale fall in love? She does, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Every Sunday at eight a.m. I'm gonna stop watching Kids Masterpiece Theater starting this week! I can't believe she's really considering it! This is very important in dialogue! Every Sunday at 8 a.m. is definitely when TV puts the best shows on. God, that's so early. So early. That's like, I mean, this is really going back now, but when I was a little kid, they used to, believe it or not, not have enough content to put on TVs. So channels would actually go off the air <laughs> at night. And no. so, like, if you woke up for Saturday morning cartoons and you were watching TV at, like, 5.45, you had to watch, like, a test pattern for 15 minutes before yeah. the first show would start. It's crazy. It's bananas. So what's the Jam and Ninja TV show like? It started from a remake of an old movie, to tell you the truth. That's what it was called? The Jam and Ninja, yeah, to tell you the truth. And then to tell you the lie is the sequel. <laughs> the German ninja like the samurai shows is geared towards kids. 
I love that outfit. <laughs> I'm so sad that he died. It looks like it's cool, but it actually sucks. It's the story of a ninja who can't scale a wall, but become a but became a big pop star anyway, amongst the creatures. Uh, what? I guess his record deal wasn't on the other side of that wall. <laughs> Is a really lousy ninja. Absolutely couldn't do any ninja things right at all. But boy, could he sing. With his trusty bright red guitar in hand, he took the ancient world by storm. <laughs> but boy, could he sing. With his trusty guitar in hand and sound muffling mask. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. A uh, ninja with a bright red guitar. And then, the final fight in front of his beloved Princess Misola. Jammin' versus the Muromachi Five. Suddenly, our brave hero catches a not so jammin' cold the night before Battle Three. Oh, that's too bad for him. Yeah. It was <laughs> distinctively not jammin'. <laughs> but this kind of pop music based love story is something high school girls really like. Um. Yes, Pearl? What happens next? I want to know. Jammin. Jammin Ninja. Will he be able to sing? What about Princess Misola? Every uh, Sunday at 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I wish I knew the answers to that, but considering you were just in the room where Jammin Ninja was murdered. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like they could replace him. Uh, um, which show should I watch? Hmm. I can't believe she's really considering it. What a- what a strange bit of dialogue to repeat. I know. Uh, alright. What can you tell me about, uh, Lady Hot Pants over here? Hmm. Hey, that's Miss Andrews. She's match manager. She thinks I'm a nice guy, but will never amount to anything more. <laughs> wee, 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 wee. Uh, so hot. Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little. Hmm, so Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. What do you know about Ms. Andrews? <laughs> Bow down honkaroos in a heartbeat? <laughs> Sounds like my type. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, here's the thing. <laughs> Such an old fucking reference. <laughs> I don't really know her. Know her, you know? <laughs> That's right, Pearls. There's sort of a small rumor going around about her right now. A rumor? Ah, if you're interested, I'd be glad to share what I know. He's so happy. He looks like a lion that's just found his next meal. Uh, alright. Help me! <laughs> he grabs him by the coat. Keep talking! Would you mind telling me about this gossip? Ah, so you are interested in it. I didn't say I wasn't. I figured you would be. Word around town is she thinks you're the biggest fucking idiot in the world. Oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> But also awesome! <laughs> yeah. In fact, she and Francisca von Karma <laughs> go on, both <laughs> think you're a fucking idiot. Oh. <laughs> so they think of me. <laughs> <laughs> I have such a weakness for celebrity gossip, too. Oh, really? You do, huh? Yeah, so take a look at this. Looks like a tabloid Miss Oldbag would read. All right, let's see here. Jam and Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. You see now, don't you? What? What are we talking about? You can stop pretending to be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Word on the street is, someone was murdered. <laughs> yeah, I, uh... <laughs> Did you? Have you? I, that's why we can't leave the hotel. Did, uh, you right. walked around at all, yeah, or? It's fine. Juan Carita didn't have a manager of his own, which means if we're talking about a certain manager with the initials AA. Adrian Andrews. Abraham Ankin. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Abraham Ankin. <laughs> this is big news. But it seems kind of odd, that woman, Ms. Andrews. How could she be the 16th president of the United States? <laughs> He's also dead. None of this adds up. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get to the bottom no, of this. No, no, this is all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Just pacing, like, <laughs> scratching his chin. <laughs> Together with the biggest rival of her client? <sighs> it's that wonderful thing that can only happen between two people. Murder. <laughs> Murder! <laughs> it's 
Mr. Power has been so happy. Pearls is just following along, not having any idea as to why he's smiling. Well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. What are we referring to here? Yeah, what? That's <laughs> fucked up to say. <laughs> So, so I'm just so I'm remembering this right. She she was seen dating Juan. I I think that's where that was going, but I don't. I was too busy saying stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I was too. Uh, all right. Well, now I have a new thing. Great. So let's go. Uh, let's talk to some other people. Was that was that my snot? What happened? Did I just, like, blow snot on my arm? It's possible. God, that's disgusting. Eh. All right. It happened. <laughs> Take that! <laughs> <laughs> you, you tap her, like, <laughs> breathing glass dome with a hammer. Dung, dung, dung. <laughs> you the slowly spreading crack. <laughs> All right, I'll be honest with you for now. Then please, tell us what you saw. But oh, what a waste. And here I have a perfectly good chance to have a little fun at a youngin's, at you youngin's expense. I am a little devil after all. Yeah, murder witnessing devil. <laughs> uh, doesn't that imply you aren't a good person? All right, I'll give you what you want. Here's your fucking autograph, you piece of shit. You hate it. Hey, hey. That's, that's Juan's autograph. Yes, it is. And it even says, It's my dearest way to it. That's me, right? Right? Yes. Um. My name is Wendy Olbeck, so that Wendy has to be me, right? When you were 14, was your name Wendy Oldbag? Yeah. It's, uh, seems like oddly appropriate now. Well, it may say Wendy. But somehow, I don't think Juan had this Wendy in mind when she when he signed it. That was back when I was a, a young bag. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, please give it to me. Let me have it, please. Uh, un... <laughs> I can't let you have it just like that. Yes, yes, I know. Then how about an exchange? Damn. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> wow, she must really want this autograph. My offer isn't good enough for you? Wait, what offer? Three psyche locks? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, Mr. Wright, you win. Yeah, it's like it's like one of those situations where it's like, can can John Argabuckle hear Garfield or yeah. Wendy Oldbag ready to open up all four clogged ventricles of her <laughs> gross heart, all for my dearest one. Oh We're getting some info, bruh. We're getting mad info, bruh. I'm ready to spill the old person tea. <laughs> An Earl beans. Grey. <laughs> All right, tell me everything you know. I feel bad for you now. Huh? I tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding. Oh, no. It was about 10 minutes before Juan's body was discovered. It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet for the 80th time today. <laughs> And Minding my own business. Did you tell that to police? Well, of course. I thought I could get a gift certificate or two out of it. Maybe more. For the, two, for the police? Two gift certificates? <laughs> How did you manage? <laughs> I've been recruited again for that part of the trial. You know, the trial tomorrow. This time you're going to get it. I'm going to work hard to get your client pronounced guilty. Cool. But Mr. Ungard hasn't done anything bad. I would know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I don't care about details like that. I know he did my dear poor Juan in. I just do. That yellow-bellied chicken. A yellow-bellied chicken? I wonder what that would look like. Look like a chicken with a yellow belly. Yeah, you can pretty much imagine it, I think. <laughs> I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, and I say he did it. What did Mr. Ongard ever do to her to deserve this? What did Ongard do to you to deserve this? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know? That guy, he framed my Juan. He created that scandal that plagued poor Juan. Mr. Nick. What? <laughs> I gotta pee. What's a scandal? Oh, boy. Uh, I'll tell you about that after we get home, okay? Well, Pearl, when a celebrity does something 
fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> they create a hashtag on Twitter. Yeah. Poor Y. <laughs> Led astray by the, the wiles of that vile temptress. Mr. Nick, what do vials and wild temptress mean? Oh my god. Just go over there for a second. Uh, uh, how about we just listen to what Miss Oldbag has to say now, okay, Pearls? So, Miss Oldbag, who is this woman, quote unquote, you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? That guy, he shoved the girl into Juan on purpose. His own manager? But why? <laughs> I thought lawyers were smart. It was to create a scandal to make Juan lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal that dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. Why do you know about that anyway, Miss Oldbag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. Ongard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says... So. <gasps> Walking magazine? <laughs> oh, of course, a tabloid. Next week? Doesn't that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Ms. Oldbag have information like that? Where did she get it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, let's fucking go. Go to the hallway. Go to the hallway and talk to her. Like you to present the Magatama to her. Unlock her cyclops. <laughs> She's got two. Now I know who the scandal's about. Lotto, will you please answer my questions? On the night of the murder, wh why were you loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I? For my scoop. What I want to know about are the details of this scoop. That's something I can't tell you. I mean, th that there's my bread and butter. All right, then, an unpleasant tabloid photographer looking for a scoop. Oh, uh, you're looking for a scandal. Sure. Could it be that you're a lot hard looking for a huge story? Uh-huh. Um, Karita and... And this person, Adrian. The, the, this woman. She's Adrian Andrews, Matt on guard's manager. Ever heard of her? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. The Nickel Samurai's manager caught secretly meeting with his rival, the Jammin' Ninja. He was jamming something else, that's for sure. It would be the hottest story of the season, wouldn't it? You're pretty good at this guessing thing, Mr. Lawyer. But you can't just make up any old thing and think I don't make the papers. Okay. You gotta have backup. Back up. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have that. What is it? New sauce. What the fuck is That's happening? it. Uh -huh. So show me something that shows that one guy had something with Miss Andrews. Okay. I've got the fucking magazine clipping. An article from Gossip Land. This is the article from a certain weekly tabloid. Jam and Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I've been whipped psychologically. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Karita didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Mr. Ongard's manager, Adrian Andrews. <gasps> she has the initials A.A. You saw this article and then thought to take some pictures of them as proof. Anybody could have those initials. In, in fact, anybody named anybody, anybody could have those initials. <laughs> oh, you're right! <laughs> That's why you were looking around Mr. Corey's door last night. Wah. Got him. Boom. Suck it, Lotta. Suck it. Fade out and fade into the same scene. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> you were looking into Mr. Corita and Miss Andrew's affair, weren't you? You got it. <laughs> I'm cool now. <laughs> awesome! I was going to get myself a scoop by catching him in a secret meeting. But there's already an article about it in one of the weekly tabloid magazines. The better weekly tabloid magazines. It's no longer breaking news. What you just say? Her initials are AA. Hey, hey, what kind of vague thing is that? That ain't no proof of nothing. People are going to want to see real proof. Well, at least I do. So that's what I was doing. Getting photos. <laughs> I'm gonna whip up the reader's interest with some gossip and a little misleading. 
and spice it up a little and have myself an exclusive story. Wow, a lot of nice journalistic integrity you got there. I already finished writing up my spicy article, you know. But... Duh. The paper I wrote it on, my note to myself, it's gone. Your note to yourself? Are you waiting? <laughs> <laughs> It was inside the case of my $1,600 camera. They done run off together. They done run. I came here for my big story. Didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Yeah, I understand. And where can I find your pirate's booty? It's a little to make a gag go bonkers, <laughs> Lada? <laughs> Lada! <laughs> We're losing her! Call an ambulance! <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day when someone done steal something from me. You really want that note back, huh? And your camera, less lesser of the two. I've got no idea why, though. The story on that note is probably a bold faced lie. <laughs> Alright, bye. I'll fucking see you later. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I gotta do a lot of oh. Oh, I haven't seen this scene in a long time. Yeah, the little guy. Yeah, the little guy. That was like a that was like a clue in one of the cases in the first game, wasn't it? Might have been. It's a little guy. It's been a while. Detective Gumshoe said they had an investigation briefing. Hope yeah. I didn't miss it. Oh, he's bad. Hey, so you came, pal. Yeah, and I also arrived. Why the blunt greeting? A 420 blazer. Because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. <laughs> He's just passing it to you. Yeah. <laughs> we do it here all the time. Yeah, it's illegal, but I mean, who's going to arrest us? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are airtight. But, but, we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. We're positively dying. Oh, fuck. So what do you mean the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details now, but there's two big pieces. You ever seen those, like, those things that seal food in plastic and then they suck all the air out? That's crazy. Air. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Detective? <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> and both of them are in this photo. Mm. Okay, so the knife and what else? The wine glass? The first is the button that's missing from the victim's chest. Right. Oh, that's the button that you found during your body search of Mr. Ungarde. Yep, I found it in the folds of Nickel Samurai's special pants. Um, uh, and the second one is? The knife in his chest, pal. The fingerprints on, on the knife in his chest, to be exact. Um, who's are they? Well, as I've stated before three times before this scene. <laughs> you didn't even have to ask, little Missy. It's obvious. They're mad on guards. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. So, what about this airtight testimony? It's that old security lady, Miss Oldbag. Oh, Miss Oldbag. She's not. Well, she doesn't want people to know. Oh, that's right. I thought so. What do you mean you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? No! <laughs> no! I even told her not to open that mouth of hers and blab to anyone. And here she is, blabbing. That's literally her only thing. Her blab knob is stuck on ten, and there's no turning it down, trust me. Gumshoe, your blab knob! <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry, I'll keep this trench coat button tight. <laughs> yeah. It's on a six right now. <laughs> Yeah, well, Miss Oldbag saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. Ongard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. No way! <laughs> Somebody stabbed me! I wouldn't believe it. I'll never believe it. <laughs> Mr. Ongard, star of my new favorite show. That's so fucked up that I've never, <laughs> ever seen. Bro, that's how, I mean, that's what being a kid was like. I guess like, you're right. Oh, it's my new favorite thing. You like, literally have only read one thing about it. Yeah. We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal with Mr. Karita? But why? Well, two years ago, a woman huh? uh, committed suicide. 
Suicide? Is that the kind of drink that you make at Taco Bell when you combine all of the sodas? What? You ever heard it called that? No. A suicide drink? What's What makes it so crazy? Because it's like, you know, you, it's like you're not supposed to drink it. <laughs> like you're making poison for I yourself. Guess, I guess you could say that with also. Yeah. Her name was Celestin Pax. What? the fuck kind of name is that? I don't know. It feels like it's got it's, some kind of like pun or joke yes, to it, but... but what is it? I don't know. Celestin Pax. Celestin Pax. I don't fucking know. I don't, yeah. I don't know. And she was Juan Carita's manager. But he didn't have a manager. Oh, the, oh. the victim's manager! Oh, I guess he didn't have a... a, a she killed herself. Oh. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> literally the only thing we know about her. But that's not all, pal. Miss Impax was Miss Adrian's Andrew's mentor. Whoa. She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Is this like a is this like a parallel of the show where there's like a why? A love why? A love why. That could be. Yeah. But who would be the third piece of the why? I don't know, me. <laughs> Get me in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm Aaron Hansen and I love cock. Yeah. So, that's, I mean, what, what are we talking about here? Give me that fucking superstar penis. I don't care. I meant her. <laughs> A woman who was both Mr. Karita's manager and Ms. Andrews' mentor. Could her suicide have something to do with this case? Do you want to know more about her, pal? Uh, yes. No. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm good. Yeah. I'd rather just wade into the fog. <laughs> She was the victim's manager and was also Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. Okay, so now we're, you're up to speed on everything you know about. <laughs> it's been two years since the suicide, and now the two are linked again by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence. Oh! oh. <laughs> is, that, is that her pager? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. It turns out she's a robot. I mean, dude, <laughs> like, who gets to walk into a police detective station? To start whipping and just start detectives. Whipping people. Meanwhile, a guy in the background is like, I really should answer this email. <laughs> <laughs> They've been waiting all day. Mish von Karma! You can't seem to stop allying yourself with the enemy, can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. You you don't. You don't mean I do. It's coffee. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You are no longer needed. Goodbye. 30 minutes? This I, is where I work! How big <laughs> is this building? Yeah. <laughs> That's Wait, please wait, sir. If I don't get this much pay, I'll stop. Quiet. If it weren't all traitors like you. I would have won. Is that what you want to say? Hmm. Who? That voice. Oh! Oh, oh my god! Edgeworth! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. It's been a long time, right? This person... This is Mr. Edgeworth. Not less handsome than I thought he would be. What am I gonna do with you? Still blaming others when things go wrong? You haven't changed a bit, Francisca. You, you How dare you show your face to me without a shred of shame upon it? You soiled the one common name, dragged it through the mud. You even ran away with your tail between your legs like the ill-bred dog you are. Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed to be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Francisca. How are things going? Very bad! <laughs> I hear you're having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. On account of that you lost twice? You have a 0% success rate? <laughs> yeah. You! You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. I want to be crushed under the weight of Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Keep your assumptions to yourself. I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix Wright, I will see you tomorrow in court. It will be a clinical lesson on the meeting of total victory. All right, well, I haven't lost a single case yet, so... <laughs> Still the same wild mare she always was. Uh, so, Edgeworth, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> What's up? How's that big dick of yours? <laughs> I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick, the 
that's nothing. That's nothing you should ever say to a live person. <laughs> I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. Are you gonna run tomorrow's trial? You heard her, right? That wild mare hasn't given in yet, it seems. So no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Oh shit! What? The oh 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 my god! Oh no! Oh, we're back. I don't know, that was weird. Did you hit it with your big clumpy feet? I don't know. Okay. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. But I will say one thing. Hate turns to love very quickly. <laughs> I know. You can't win on your own at the twi trial tomorrow. At the twile? <laughs> the twi at the big naughty baby twile. You can't win on your own at the twile. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Thank you, Pearl. <laughs> I have something definitive that you lack. And working together is the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth. In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. You are terrible at your job and I'm amazing. <laughs> well, if you ever feel the need for my ass, distance, it's available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous with information. You know, I get that they're like, they present these characters as if they're like these, these fucking like all-knowing fucking master lawyers, but in the actual flow of how this game has gone, mm -hmm. they've lost every case and I've won all of them. Absolutely. So, I don't know. <laughs> well, a lot of times, you know, like you see it with conspiracy theorists on the internet when they're like faced with direct evidence that what they're saying is wrong, they just double down. Yeah. I, th I think there's a little bit of that. Yeah. Just what is going on inside his head? God, I wish I knew! I wish I could get into that soft, gooey head of his! A lot of things may have happened. However, Manfred von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect win record is proof of von Karma. I mean, he lost to me, but that's fine. Yeah. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Why are you making that face at me? <laughs> Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? <laughs> to think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. And not for the pure love of watching innocent people go to jail. <laughs> You're a monster. <laughs> It'd have been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. Damn. I see. Then let me ask you something. Which of my balls do you want in your mouth first? Balls! <laughs> <laughs> Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Well, with Francisca, she almost always says, I will defeat you this time. The, oh. the instant she sees me. But the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. And no matter how many people they've killed. <laughs> yeah. To save their lives! To save your client, you say. To those who think only of their own ego-driven goals. Those kind of prosecutors are reprehensible to me. I'm not naming names or anything. Even if you're a prodigy. Or someone like you, Edgeworth. It looks like there's still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I have yet to learn? Me? Hmph. <laughs> I bet you don't even know about them double-fisted turn technique while you work on the top of the knob. Well, that's enough for now. The time when you <laughs> the time when you will see is coming soon enough. Um, I know what frauding is. <laughs> like all the detectives turn their heads. <laughs> Just like screaming it. <laughs> I've been doing my research, Edgeworth! <laughs> I know frauding! <laughs> I'll get you there for sure! <laughs> Sir, we're gonna have to ask you to leave. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, so what's the deal with this lady? This woman? Oh, she dead. <laughs> it's another key to solving this case. D do you really think so? No, I was kidding. Yes! She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago. But she was suddenly called away by a different show and became one Carita's manager. And then a few months later, Celeste Impacts died. Oh, but her death was ruled a suicide, right? 
Yes. But there is still one riddle we've yet to solve. Is she dead? A riddle? A suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished, huh? Well, I guess that's the end of the conversation. It said, to my dearest Wendy, love always, Juan. (laughs) 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 Miss Impact's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there is no mistake. However, we could not be sure who suicided her. (laughs) We cannot find a suicide. We have to open a second investigation. (laughs) That's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. A suicide note. But how do you know Ms. Impacts had ever written such a note? Call it a hunch. A woman's intuition. (laughs) (laughs) There was no solid evidence. However, we did find traces of ink on her right index finger. I mean, she could have just been writing something. Which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. I don't know. Seems like a jump. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Juan Carita himself. The victim? Ah! She's floating! He was the one who found her body. He was so shocked that piece of cattail straw that he was just chewing on fell right out of his mouth. (laughs) Which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. You can also see it in this picture. There it is, sitting on the table. Mr. Carita hit his own manager's suicide note. But why? Those feet! This is not the time, Phoenix. (laughs) As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report. Part one, anyway. Part two kind of goes off the rails. <laughs> yeah. It's not as strong. Kind of the, the definitive way of reading them is you just start with one and then skip to three. Yeah. And then you just assume that they got there by, I don't know, space travel. <laughs> part one. Suicide part one. Okay. Well, really fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's talk more about... um. That shit you just gave me. I love that. Because that's the flow of this game. Mm-hmm. I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports. Even less. <laughs> oh, God, okay. Thank oh. goodness. <laughs> Worst of all of the reports that have multiple parts like that one. That has two. The smallest multiple there is. <laughs> two parts? Like Dune? Yes. Just like Dune. <laughs> what you just handed to me is the first part of the report. Here is the second part. The second part of the report is about an attempted suicide. The attempter's name. It's Adrian Andrews! Oh, fuck. Are they going to do it together? <laughs> Miss Andrews, what did she do? She she tried to kill herself. She, she doesn't seem like the kind of person to try to kill herself, though. I mean, I only met her for like three seconds, but... You think she's a strong career woman? That's just what she wants you to think. Adrian Andrews, she has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her dependent nature. That's what she was really like on the inside. Ms. Andrews, dependent? Talk about the exact opposite of what that woman is. Dependent on herself? <laughs> de- de- depe- dependent... Okay. (laughs) (laughs) On this episode of Aaron Trails Off Due to Looking at a Walkthrough. No! (laughs) You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. You you really threw people off the trail. (laughs) Dependent on herself. (laughs) Then like 30 seconds of silence. Uh And then then go to the detention center and then talk to Ingard. Oh, I can't even remember. He was like, oh, the lawyer did. Was it Was it me? It was you. Oh, the lawyer did. So what'd you find out? Um, well, I'm still in the middle of investigating. I see. But I've already told you everything I know, dude. All right, well, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me about your activities last night? After I got the award, I took a break and went back to my room. I had that post-ceremony stage show to do, so I was in my nickel samurai closet. And you were alone the entire time? My manager was running around being busy, so yeah. 
because of the press conference you were supposed to hold after the show. I told you, dude. I have no idea about any press conference, all right? That's strange. I thought the Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. I confess to not knowing about the press conference. Oh! <laughs> Thereby making this press conference speech null and void. <laughs> Why'd we show up here? Uh, anyway, when I was leaving my room, that's when I noticed it was kind of noisy. Mr. Carita was already dead at that time. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's what I gathered anyway from my manager who killed him. That's what I heard. I'm beginning to gather that this guy can't do a thing on his own. And that's when the detective in the green coat showed up. He searched me, and then out of the blue, the dude kissed me. <laughs> it was so dreamy. Gomes, you kissed you? <laughs> what the fuck? Just like that? Remember Zelda from the CDI when she's like, You kissed him? <laughs> and then they're like, Take this flute. And she's like, Oh. No? No, I don't. Oh, man. She's talking to that other girl that she's like, I traded it with Link for a kiss. And she's like, You kissed him? <laughs> it's so funny. I don't remember this. Oh man, it's like burned into my brain. Shit. About you and the victim, Mr. Juan Carita, what sort of... That's got nothing to do with anything, dude. Oh, does it not? Okay, cool. Man, with that face of his, you can't tell he's the same age as me. And he wanted to try to make a Jam and Ninja movie, even though we all know it would fail. The Nickel Samurai still won in the end, right? Yeah, I'm alive, he's dead. I took the Grand Prix by storm. So why would I, the winner, have any reason to kill the guy anyway? I don't know. Dude, you'd think it'd be the other way around, you know? Okay. You seem like a really cool Yeah, nice maybe guy. you're Juan Carita. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm dead? <laughs> oh no! Oh! Juan Carita has hair like I did in the mid-80s. <laughs> Huh? Um, what's wrong? How much do you know? What do you mean, how much? Like, about trigonometry. I haven't been paying attention in cold. <laughs> <laughs> I need help! <laughs> it's like a stack of papers. Mr. Lawyer, I may be your client, but I hope you will keep yourself out of my personal life. He's, he's always smiling. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, beep. Uh, no, I would never. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lunch appointment I have to keep. In jail. You're in detention! Who in the world are you gonna eat with? The security guard? He's like, oh, please. Mr. Nick. Yeah. The security guard, he's just looking forward, trying not to show in motion, but sweating like, oh my god, please. <laughs> please let me have lunch with him. This Celeste Impacts lady. Somehow, I get the feeling she's a very important person in all this on account of the guy who was convicted of murder freaked the fuck out when I showed him a picture of her. Yeah, not to mention Gumshoe and Edgeworth both said she's a very important part of this case. Yeah. Alright, let's go... My, what? What? There's some fucking weird, like, series of... Like, I had to go back there to go back to the hotel. Yeah, it works off, like, like tree branches, you know? Yeah. yeah it, it is odd. And I gotta go to the hallway... And I gotta go to my guard's room. Goodness me. Yeah, just make a big list of places I can go. Hmm, looks like Miss Andrews isn't here. Maybe they feel like it gives you the feeling of like you're going from building to building. Yeah. And then to the rooms. That's not good. I still have a few questions I want to ask her. Like, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> and she has that psyche rock on her heart, right? Well, we don't have much of a choice. I guess we'll have to come back later. And I'm gonna look at stuff that I never looked at before because I'm a fucking idiot. I didn't look at this. Cool. There's some samurai looking clothes on the sofa here. I wonder who it belongs to. Um, I think that jacket looking thing is called a happy. <laughs> yeah. Makes me sad to look at though. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm sure something like that would make a great souvenir. Maya would be absolutely thrilled. <gasps> Maya! <laughs> <laughs> now I'm sad. There's a giant bone sitting on the plate, <laughs> and also the remainder of some food. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I, I don't really like meat. Hell yeah. There's something weird about this plate. I just wish I could put my finger on what it is. Oh, my dick's on it! <laughs> I can put my finger on that for sure. I mean, it's my dick after all. <laughs> Looks like dishes left over from dinner. A dinner for two at that. 
I'm sure they're Mr. On Guard and Ms. Andrews' plates. Looks like they had T-Bone steaks. What with Global Studios? What's with Global Studios and T-Bone steaks? I was gonna- wasn't there like a- a T-Bone steak thing in the very first game? Like, oh, that's right. Way long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we can wax poetic about it next time on Game Grumps. I would love that. All right. See you then, Bubba. Bye. Bye. Did you just call me Bubba? No.